everybody, it's uh, Shade Nelson again, and today I'm going to be showing you how to tie a tandem bucktail jig. Uh, it's going to be similar to this one here, but this one is olive and white. We are going to be using chartreuse and black bucktails today. Uh, we might throw a little bit of flash on there, because anything with chartreuse I pretty much only throw in super dark or stained water, um, like spring, when the ice comes off. Um, if you get ice on your lakes, chartreuse or orange are a really good color to throw. Um, just something really visible. This one in particular is olive on top and natural on bottom. It kind of imitates a uh, baby bass color. And it is a 4 out hook up front and a 2 watt on back, 3 8 ounce head, it's a really good jig to tie, um, small mouth love it, large mouth love it, uh, pike, musky, and what I'm going to find out this year is if tiger musky like it, so let's start off with the materials you'll need, obviously you'll need a vise, you will need wire cutters. You'll need a piece of wire. Use no less than 30 pound test. This is American Fishing Wire 30 pound Surflon 1x7. Um, it's nylon coated. You will need a lighter. You'll see why later. Of course you're going to use your whip finish tool. You're going to need scissors, uh, head cement, and this is actually brush on nail glue for glue on fingernails. It works really well if you are out of head cement and your local fly shop is out or closed. Um, and I'm using a 280 denier ultra strong thread today, just in black. Um, and this is a Three yacht owner jig head. It's a one quarter ounce head with a three yacht hook and a two yacht hook for the trailer. And I am going to show you how to tie a double bucktail jig. So this hook has barbs on it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just smashing the barbs down. that hook in your vise and then I'm gonna zoom in real quick. Alright so to start tying you always want to start with your back hook first and it doesn't matter where you start on this hook but make sure you lay down a heavy base layer. That base layer um, gives you something to attach the material to and creates friction so your material is not sliding all around on the hook. Once you get a good thick base layer on there, what you're going to want to do is start with your bucktail. And I think I'm going to do black on top and green on bottom. And with the bucktail, you don't want to do a whole lot at a time. You just want to do it in little bits. So what I do with bucktail is I do this so I can pull out all the longer hairs. And I'll grab it from the back, pinch it and pull it this way so I can pull out all the shorter hairs. And you come up here and you kind of I want to move it all the way around the hook and wrap around twice and tighten. Wrap around twice and tighten. And then do a few more wraps really tight because you don't want this bad boy going anywhere if you're going to be chasing predatory fish. So 
right there, that's basically going to be the back of your jig because the hook on a jig is top side. <clears throat> then you're going to come to your next material, which is going to be chartreuse in this case. And I've made I've made them in chartreuse and orange and black and white. I've got a couple in olive and black and olive and white. But I felt like doing a black and chartreuse. So you can follow the rule of halves on this. If you follow the rule of halves, you're going to want your bucktail short. But um, I'm going to try to give this as big of a profile as I can, so I'm just going to line it up even. And then mark it where you want to cut it. Pull out your shorts and your longs. Cut it where you want it for length. Twice and tighten, twice and tighten. Make sure you're nice and even. And then just tighten it up. Tie that in there. Don't worry about making it too tight. There's no such thing. And then, like I said, for flash. You don't want to get too much flash because I don't know, I just have really bad luck when I go overboard with the flash. So you're just going to want enough to kind of make it subtle. You're going to take a few strands, nothing crazy. You're going to tie that the length of the tail, and I'm going to be going down the sides on this. So you hold it on the side, and you'll go around with a couple wraps really tight wraps then you'll bring it over fold it on over so it's going down the other side and just hurry and throw a bunch of securing wraps on them and this um, you don't necessarily have to make it look pretty but I'm going to try to cover up all these ends of the bucktail with thread because I'm particular like that. So once you get that all tied up, make sure your flash is all the same length. Cut off any excess. And then you're just going to whip finish this back into the hook. I don't know if any of you know how to use a whip finish, but I take the hook end first and I wrap the loop around it and then I twist once. And I'm going to go around one, two, three, four, five times. Pop this end out, pull it tight while holding tension on the hook. And then that knot is tight and secure and snug and it's not going to go anywhere. And then you take your sky zores, cut that thread off, take your head cement or your wife's nail glue, and I put it over the whole knot. Another good thing about nail glue is it's almost instantaneous drying, but if you get impatient, you can take your lighter. I recommend doing this in a well ventilated area. You can take your lighter and just make sure it doesn't burn any of your material, any of the bucktail or the uh, flashaboo. And then when I'm done with the bucktail, I will kind of pinch and pull because when you're tying your bucktail, you're going to get loose threads or loose hairs. So you're just going to make sure you don't have any loose ones. And that's cured. And with the wire, um, the way I do it, I don't like the hooks to turn. 
I don't like the back hook to turn while this jig head hook is straight up. So I do this different than a lot of people will. It's kind of like an articulated fly, but a little bit different. Um, the way I do this is I line up the ends. This is about a 7 inch piece of wire, by the way. I line up the ends, and then I'll take them down and I will pinch them so that they form a nice little, a nice sharp V is preferred. And once you have that V, you're going to shove the folded end through the eye of the through the bottom of the eye of the hook. You're gonna hang on to the tag ends. You're gonna bring it over the hook. And then you're just gonna pull it tight. And what you want is not to catch a bucktail like that. Don't do that. Don't be a dummy. What you want is you want your loop to come right to the bottom of the eye of the hook. Here, let's turn some light on for you guys. You're going to take the loop and you're just going to pull that to the bottom of the hook and pull tight on that. And that is not going to go anywhere. That way. And then you're going to put your hook the way I do it is I put it down here like this so that it's holding tension on this. And then with this, the reason I use nylon coated is right, right here. Take your lighter, and if you're using this particular nylon, nylon coated wire, just run your lighter up and down for a couple of seconds, and then pinch them together. And then when you can see all these clear crystallated bubbles, that means that your wire is fused together, and that is better than any knot that I have found to, to tie in wire. Um, this is the same wire that I'm going to be using for my leader when I'm fishing for muskie. You can see that the, the bubbles are nice and they look like little tiny crystals on your line. That means that the nylon has fused itself together. Um, and this is the wire I'm using. I know it's backwards to you, but it's uh, American Fishing Wire Surflon 1x7 30 pound test. I do not recommend anything smaller than 30 pounds, um, especially if you're fishing where there are toothy fish. Now, if you're fishing just streams, if you're just going to tie this as a streamer for trout in a stream or a river, then you'll be good just using like a 20 pound monofilament or a 10 pound monofilament you can do that with or fluorocarbon line whatever you want to use the reason I use wire is because muskie have very sharp teeth and they they don't break the line they cut it I'm going to turn that line off so I can see okay so there's that and now to attach this to this the way I do that is I will put the hook in the vise make sure it's tight and not going to go anywhere and I'll grab my thread and with my base layer I'm going to start all the way at the head and I'm going to go down once to the barb of the hook you can see that, I don't know if you can see that, but the barb of the hook is right with that line. And then you're going to come up. That's all you're going to do for your base layer on the jig head. The reason you do that, you want to expose, leave some wire exposed, or some metal on the hook exposed, so that the metal from the wire can create friction. 
um, and then you decide where you want it to be. You size it up. And I usually like to tie with the eye of this hook about a sixteenth of an inch away from the back of this hook. I don't know if you can see that. But you want both wires to be parallel. You don't want any crosses or turns or over-unders. You want parallel. Otherwise your hook's going to be off to one side or the other. And then I like to tie this to the back of the weight on the head. Just cut that off right there. Ouch, be careful. Sharp. And I'm just going to tie this in really tight. Make sure that both lines or pieces of that wire are running parallel. And then I'm not going to leave any space between these wraps. And I'm going to wrap all the way down to the barb of the hook again. to the head. And that is how you attach the second hook in a double jig rig. And you might have to put a couple of kinks in your wire to make everything line up perfectly. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just that's how I am. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with our black bucktail. Just a little dab will do you. Do this for you guys again. I, I will sacrifice my vision so that you can have a better look at what I'm doing. Pull on the shorts, pull on the longs. And for this, I'm just going to go right up to the base of the head. But I'm going to pull this through so that your black lines up with your black and your chartreuse lines up with your chartreuse. I'm going to hold that there around twice and tighten. Around twice and tighten. And then I'm going to wrap towards the head to lay all these down. You can cut them off, but I don't like to because... It just makes a mess that you have to clean up later if you're doing it at your kitchen table. And you have a very beautiful wife that you don't want to upset by leaving animal hair all over her kitchen. And then I kind of want to wrap those down to about there just so that they lay flat because we're going to be layering that chartreuse on top. with bucktail never pull from the top you always want to pull from the bottom if you can um, and then you're just going to pull from the bottom and pull it up grab as much as you think you'll need and when tying with any animal hair you never cut the thin end you always want to cut the body end, the hide end. <whistles> pull the shorts, pull the longs. There's a lot of shorts on this. Again, line it up with the head. One, oh damn. 